from Hollywood, the Screen Directors Playhouse. <laughs> Star, John Garfield. Production, Body and Soul. Director, Robert Rossum. The Hollywood Screen Directors present a portrait on canvas. The motion picture drama, Body and Soul, starring John Garfield in his original role of Charlie Davis. Gladiators, the heroes, the fighters, the contender, Jackie Marlowe, and the champ, Charlie Davis. Charlie Davis. If you've ever watched the prize fight, you've watched Charlie. His body reddening under the leather shock, the split lip and the crimson welt, the eyes tired, tired. This is the body of Charlie Davis, defending champion of the universe. You know Charlie. But his soul, the soul of the gladiator. That you don't know. That the crowd never knows. Take it, Sam, take it. He's getting in. Can't stop him. Try. Two time. Here it is, Sam. One. Down. Gotta get up. Gotta fight. They saw me out. Down the drain. All the years, from the beginning. The amateurs. And Shorty. Shorty, pass the butter. Ah, here you are. Some fight, huh, Shorty? You see me call him? Wham, a knocker. So you KO an amateur stumble bum at a club stag. That makes you a champion? Oh, we're getting a free dinner out of it, ain't we? I'm doing all right. Yeah, you're doing fine. You love living with your ma on an east side cheese box. You love not having a job. You love the depression. Oh, yeah, you're doing great. I'm sorry. Rockefeller won't lend me no money. Oh, you're a fighter, Charlie. You can be a great pro fighter. Well, go and argue with my ma. She don't understand, Charlie. Well, she hates fighting, Shorty. She don't want me to fight pro. Hey, here comes the speeches. Uh... Folks, the Iroquois Democratic Club has a big surprise for our own neighborhood champ, Charlie Davis. Hooray! Uh, just a minute. The privilege, the privilege of a solo dance with Miss Iroquois Democratic Club. And here she is, boys. Here she is. Hey, Charlie. Look at what you're getting in a bathing suit, yet. <laughs> well, you gotta dance with her. Oh, now, wait a minute. Oh, wait till the boys at the pool hall hear about this. Okay, okay, don't push me. I'll dance. Um, hi. Hello. I, uh, I ain't never danced with a girl in a bathing suit. They're watching you. Better put your arms around me. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. No. You're dancing. Yeah. And you know what? I like it. I like it. This... This is where I live, Charlie. Oh, Peg, uh, don't go in yet. Why not? Why, well, I, uh, I, I want to talk to you some more. All right. Tell me, how does it feel to be the amateur boxing champion of the universe? Oh, uh, there ain't no dough in it. Then you'll have to be professional champion of the universe. Oh, it's my ma. She don't want me to fight professional. She wants I should go to school, study. But you, Charlie, you want to fight. Well, that's what I was made for. You're made like a tiger. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. Hey. I... Charlie... 
Sure, I'm a tiger. I got claws. But not for you, Peg. Not for you. Charlie, how about a game of snooker? No, shorty, no, thanks. Oh, we won't be meeting Peg for another ten minutes. What are you so nervous about? I take my girl to meet my ma for the first time. I got a right to be nervous. Charlie, your ma's a fine woman, but about the fight business, she don't know from Bosch. Lay off, will you, shorty? She don't want me to fight pro, so I don't fight pro. So you don't bring any money into the house either? Your pa dead, you without a job? Uh, Who's got a job these days? Ben Chaplin. He just won the championship. He's doing fine. Hey, look, Charlie, look. There's Phil Quinn over there, the fight manager. Hey, come on. Uh... Come on. Uh, Mr. Quinn? Yeah? I want you should meet Charlie Davis. Hello, Charlie. Uh, I've seen you fight. Yeah, pretty good, ain't he, Mr. Quinn? Not bad. Maybe someday he learns enough to make coffee and donuts. I'm not looking for coffee and donuts. <laughs> smart punk, huh? Maybe we make a deal, smart punk. No deal. I ain't fighting. Ah, beat it. You're wasting my time. Holy smoke, Shorty. I forgot about Peg. <sighs> okay, let's go, Charlie. I hope Ma likes her, Shorty. All, all through dinner, she'll ask questions. I can hear her now. And uh, where do you come from, Miss Bourne? Where do you come from, Miss Bourne? From Highland Town, Mrs. Davis. My father's a druggist there. Ah, a professional man. Very nice. My Charlie, all he thinks about is fighting. He should be the world's champion nosebreaker. He'd make money, Mrs. Davis. He'd be the champ. So let him fight for something, not for money. Oh, sit still, Charlie. I'll go. Mrs. Davis? Yes. I'm Miss Tedder from the community charity. Oh. I'm so sorry to interrupt your dinner, but I'm just getting around to your application now. Ma, what is this? Uh, maybe Peg and I should leave. No, it. no, you sit here. What is this all about? Our charity requires certain information before we can help you people. Charity? Now, race, white, religion, Jewish, nationality, American. Get out of here. Get out. Charlie. Charlie. Tell them we don't need any help. Tell them we're dead. Well, oh. I'm sorry. Get out. Oh, Charlie. Oh, Charlie, Charlie. I did it for you. You should be able to study. I'll study. I'll study how to make more money than you ever heard of. Shorty. Yeah, Charlie? Get me a fight from Quinn. Understand? I want money, money, money. I'll get the fights, Charlie. You use your fists. Use them good, and we'll make a lot of money. That's what I want, Quinn. Money. Lots of it. We're booked into Pittsburgh, Charlie. Next month it's Philly, then we head west. Give me a year, Shorty, a year to make the top. Yeah, huh? 21 fights and all winners and lots of money. Well, this is it, Charlie. How do you like your New York apartment? Hey, it's big, huh? (laughs) The best class. (laughs) And fully equipped. Open that door. Why? Go ahead, the door. Go ahead. Well, you got a surprise for me? Peg! Hello, Charlie. Oh, <laughs> Peg. Peg. Tiger, tiger, Char... Oh, you... You what I've been fighting for. I... Ma! Ma, you're here, too. Oh, Charlie, you poor face. Oh, it's nothing. Souvenirs. Well, come on, Mom. Show me around your <laughs> Peg. Yes, yeah, Shorty? Peg, you and Charlie, you should get married right away. Have I got a rival? Yeah. Money, Peg, money. He won't listen to me anymore, only you. If you don't hold on to him, goodbye, Charlie Davis. Oh, marry him, Peg, marry him now. Ah, visitors already. Hi, Shorty, where's Charlie? Here. What's up, Quinn? Ah, big news, Charlie. You're in. So we got it? 
The big fight? It's being arranged. You're going to get a crack at Ben Chaplin. You hear that, Peg? Chaplin, the champ! Uh, Quinn. Yeah? Who's handling the contracts? Roberts. Roberts? Uh, he's a gangster. He's poison. Nobody fights for real dough unless Roberts gets cut in. He's the money, the real estate, everything. What's he want? Nothing much. Only Charlie. Oh, Charlie, they're cutting you to pieces. So what? It's only more money cut more ways, a bigger part. It's like giving away your right arm. Oh, what are you talking about? You're my right arm. You stay. Quinn stays. What about me, Charlie? Do I stay? Peg, you're my girl. Am I going to be your wife, Charlie? Well, sure. Sure, we'll be married, but not now. Now I got to train for the fight, arrange things with Roberts. Oh, you understand, don't you, Peg? I always understand. Oh, we need dough, more dough. I'll fight for it, Peg, and I'll get it. You'll see. Me and my fists. We're going to get everything we want. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Body and Soul, starring John Garfield in his original role of Charlie Davis, with Barbara Eiler as Peg Bourne. Charlie Davis, the champ. His stunned body pressed against the smooth canvas of the ring. With part of his mind, Charlie knows they're cheering for his defeat, cheering for Jackie Marlowe. And with another part of his mind, he hears the referee counting. Four! Gotta get up. Fight. Five! No use. Down the drain. Sold out. Roberts. Roberts. Mr. Roberts, Quinn tells me you want to talk business. You want to fight the champ? Uh, they tell me I got to work through you. Everybody works through me. The champ, everybody. All right, Roberts. How much will it take? 50% of you from now on. You're crazy. 50%. We split Quinn's end. You pay the rest. Uh, why don't you use a gun? Only when I'm double-crossed, Charlie. You want to fight Chaplin? Like paradise, I want it. And we do business my way. Okay. Fifty percent. Congratulations. We're partners now. That's all, champ. Huh? You can go now. Yeah. Okay, partner. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Hello, Quinn. Your boy's set. I didn't tell him about that blood clot in Chaplin's head. What? So what if Chaplin does get killed? He owes me dough. He has to fight. I told him Charlie will hit light. But we don't tell Charlie. The crowd loves a killer. Roberts, look. Chaplin's still unconscious. What's wrong with him, Doc? I don't know. He's pretty badly beaten. I'd like a dressing room cleared. Sure, come on, he's all right. My boy. You hurt my boy. I'm his manager. I shouldn't have let him fight. You're getting paid, aren't you? You'd better leave. Yeah, yeah, anything I can do. Let me know. Anything. Come on, Shorty. No, I'll stick around, Charlie. I'll meet you later at the celebration party. Okay. Peg's expecting you. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. I don't understand how Chaplin got hurt so bad. You promised to have Davis take it easy on my boy. What? Who promised? Have it your way, Shorty. I promised. Chaplin has a blood clot in his brain. But Charlie didn't know anything it's about business. this. We changed our minds about telling him. 
Chaplain shouldn't have fought. It was murder. Doc. Doc, what do you mean? He's dead. Dead. He was a good boy. A good fighter. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm uh, I'm throwing a party for the new champ. Send me the bill for the funeral expenses. <laughs> He'll be all right, won't he, Roberts? Forget it, Charlie. We'll talk about him tomorrow. Hey, here comes Shorty. Maybe we ought to talk about Chaplin now, Charlie. Why? He's dead. Oh, no. Dead? I killed him? No. No, your partner, Roberts, killed him. Chaplin was double-crossed. He had a blood clot. They promised him an easy go, but they didn't tell us. Don't listen to him, Charlie. You hit him hard, that's all. You hit him like a champion. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, but we couldn't help it. Shorty... Who's been feeding you that stuff about a double cross? Oh, Charlie, get out. Get out now. We're infested with rats. What's the matter with you, Shorty? We're sitting on top of the world. You want to get out? Get out. But leave me alone. Charlie, he's your friend. Friend? Uh, Robert, you're drinking champagne, huh? Well, drink this for Chaplin. <laughs> you shouldn't have thrown it in my face, Shorty. I got friends, too. Yeah. Uh, so long, pal. Shorty, wait. I'm going with you. Roberts. What's he talking about, that stuff about a double cross and an easy go? Forget it. Get it through your head, Charlie. You're the champ now. Well, that's Peg. What's happening out there? Shorty, are you all right? Peg... Peg, help me up. Oh, it was terrible. One of Robert's thugs started to beat up Shorty as soon as we stepped outside. He won't beat up anyone else. Charlie, you didn't hurt your hands when you hit him. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, you wouldn't want to hurt those precious hands. Shorty. I'm all right, Peg. Take care of Charlie. Oh, don't let Shorty cross the street. He's hurt, stunned. Shorty, the taxi! Oh! Shorty! Oh, it hit him. He didn't see it. Shorty. Shorty. And everything you touch turns to blood. Charlie, you shouldn't drink so much. You've been on the bottle for two months. Why shouldn't I drink? I, I had three people. Three people that I love. Shorty is dead and pegged and... Ma, they don't want me, Roberts. They don't want me. Nobody wants me. Roberts... I need money. You're soft, Charlie. You can't fight anymore. Then give me, give me an advance. I, I, I'll try. Sure, sure, Charlie. You owe it to me. Roberts, how'd you get into my apartment? I let myself in. Why? To give you sixty grand. Sixty. What for? The down payment for one boxing match with Jackie Marlowe. Marlowe's going to be the new champ. You mean... You mean I should throw the fight? Charlie, you're into me for plenty. If you lie down, I call it square. And you get 60 grand besides your purse. And if I don't? You've got no choice, Charlie. But Marlowe, well, I could take that punk in two rounds. I don't want to force you, Charlie. You're finished. You're no good to me anymore. So I hand Marlowe the title, huh? Don't bother training. Marlowe will take it easy on you. Here's the money, Charlie. In this envelope. Fight's already announced. Tomorrow the bets go in. It's business. Bet your end on Marlowe. You'll be a rich man. Sure. I'll have everything I ever wanted. Ah, it's me. Oh, Charlie. Can I, uh, can I come in, Ma? Come in, come in. 
I, uh, I wanted to see you. I, I can't find Peg. Who is it, Mrs. De... Peg. How are you, Peg? Why did you come here? I, I missed you, Peg. Why? Because I love you. You loved Shorty too, Charlie. Well, haven't I suffered enough? I was wrong. Okay, I was wrong. How long do I have to pay for it? Charlie, you've changed. I'm scared, Peg. I, I had to see you and find out. Do you love me? Yes, Charlie. I love you. She's waited a long time, Charlie. I've waited a long time too, Peg. Oh, oh don't let go, Charlie. I'll, I'll fall down. Peg, Ma, I've got some great news for you. One more fight and I'm through. You stop fighting, Charlie? For good, and we'll be rich. Look, Peg, there's 60 grand to bet with in this envelope. No, Charlie, I'm taking it. Hey! If you lose it, then you want another fight and another. Mrs. Davis. It's Shimon from the grocery. Put the packages on the table, Shimon, and come see who's here. Huh? It's Charlie. Charlie, does the champion say hello to the grocer? Hello, Shimon. How are you? <laughs> oh, fine, fine. Oh, the champion. You're going to knock out this Jackie Marlowe, huh, Charlie? Oh, uh, we'll see. Oh, good luck to you. And to my $5, I bet on the fight. Also good luck. Well, you shouldn't bet, Shimon. No, everybody's betting on you, Charlie. The whole neighborhood. They're fools to bet. No, it's not the money, Mrs. Davis. It's our way of showing. In other countries... People like us have been killed and tortured because we're Jewish. But here, Charlie Davis is the champion. <laughs> so, Charlie, you'll win and still be champion, huh? Well, goodbye, Charlie, Mrs. Davis. Charlie, is something wrong? Ah, it's suckers like Shimon. They make me sore. Suckers? Didn't you understand, Charlie? Well, what do you want me to do? End up broke or in an alley with a bullet in my back? Bullets? What are you talking about? The fight's fixed. It's fixed. It's all arranged. I'm going to lose. So you don't understand what Shimon said. So does anybody look out for me? Poor Charlie. Nobody looks out for you. You're both so high and mighty. But look, you took the dough, didn't you? You took the 60 grand. Here it is, Charlie. Here. Take it to bed against yourself. Take it all back. The happiness you've given me, the, the lonely nights, the long years, the, the stupid waiting... Go on, Charlie. Make more money. Throw the fuck. Counting me out. Finished. Sold out. By Chapman. Marlowe. Cutting me to pieces. Roberts lied. Me, the champ. Seven. Charlie Davis. Counting me out. Getting up. Nine. Up. Up. Now, Marlo. Now it comes. Now you get it. Take it, Marlo. Take it for the whole lousy racket. Take it for Peg. And for Ma. And for Shimon. And for the lonely years. For the long nights and the stupid waiting. The winner and still champion of oil, Charlie Davis. Let her, let her through. Oh, Charlie. Charlie, you were wonderful. Yeah, champ. You were great. Tough. Tough luck, Roberts. You're a big shot now, Charlie. I'll have to wait. I'll pay you off for this. Roberts, you can pay me off. Everybody dies, but you can't take it away from me. Are you all right, Charlie? Are you all right? Sure, Peg. I'm all right. I never felt better in my life. <laughs>
John Garfield will return in just a moment. Next week, as always, another great star recreates one of his most exciting roles on Screen Director's Playhouse. Our story is The Uninvited, and our star, Ray Milland, with Screen Director Lewis Allen. Now, here again is tonight's star, John Garfield. Thank you. Any realism you might have found in body and soul came partly because of a couple of ex Eastside kids. A long time ago, they made some admirable efforts at beating each other's brains out in the boxing ring. I was one of them, and the other was the director of Body and Soul, Robert Rosson. Bob was a pretty lousy fighter, but he became one of Hollywood's most gifted writers and directors. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Robert Rosson. Thanks, Johnny, but you know you weren't such a hot fighter yourself in the old days. Well, I licked you, didn't I? I got even, Garfield. I got even. Yeah, how? It took a lot of plotting. First I became a writer, and then here in Hollywood I wrote a couple of pictures for you. Winning my confidence, huh? Then came the big break, body and soul. Me directing you in a fight picture. Yeah, go on. Well, remember those scenes where Jackie Marlowe was beating the pants off you? Ross and I still carry the bruises. Well, that's revenge, brother. That's revenge. <laughs> Listen, Bob, any time you want revenge by letting me work under your direction, just let me know. But I'm warning you, I'll enjoy it as much as you will. That's a deal. Good night, Johnny. Good night, Bob. Good night, everyone. And good night to you, John Garfield and Robert Rossen. Remember next week... Ray Milland, and screen director, Lewis Allen. Body and Soul was presented through the courtesy of Roberts Productions, producers of Force of Evil, starring John Garfield. Robert Rosson's latest production for Columbia release is All the King's Men, based on the Pulitzer Prize-winning novel. John Garfield will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, The Big Fall. Included in tonight's cast were Barbara Eiler, Gail Bonney, Wally Mayer, Bill Conrad, Steve Dunn, Sarah Selby, Jerry Hausner, Ralph Moody, Hans Conried, and Dan Riss. Body and Soul was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley, with dramatic direction by Bill Karn. Portions of the program were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking, inviting you to listen again at this same time next week when we present Screen Director's Playhouse, star Ray Milland, production The Uninvited, director Lewis Allen. <laughs> How would you like to be called by Victor Mature and Linda Darnell and be offered a chance to win $26,300 worth of prizes? Sunday may be your lucky day to win, so tune in Hollywood Calling Sunday on NBC. You may talk to Victor Mature and Linda Darnell and win the film of Fortune Jackpot Sunday on Hollywood Calling. Stay tuned for Bill Stern on the Sports Newsreel on NBC. 